Welcome to exercise number 13, in which we're going to be analyzing the following system. The specifications of an auto fuel pump stipulate its capacity. It got to move one liter of gasoline within a 40 second interval. Once again, this may confuse some of you guys, and maybe you're thinking that this is transient state or unsteady state. Nope, this is actually just to calculate the volumetric flow rate. We got the total volume that needs to be accounted for time. So that's exactly the definition. While maintaining a suction pressure of 150 millimeters of mercury vacuum, so that's interesting, and a discharge pressure of 30 kilopascals. So kind of funny that they are giving you the data in millimeters of mercury before, and they give you the total pressure finally in kilopascals. Either way, this is great for us to practice. Now, this is great because now we are going to account for an efficiency of the pump of 60%. Hence, we are going to be able to calculate the pump required by the system and the pump required by the pump, which typically this is way greater. Okay. Notably, both the suction and discharge lines maintain identical sizes, meaning that area suction equals to area delivery. Any changes in elevation can be disregarded because this appears to be a horizontal line or a horizontal system. You can see here, this is the inlet. You can analyze the suction or the fuel tank. Calculate the power demanded from the engine. So yeah, we need the power required from the engine. Uh, that's kind of tricky. Uh, fuel flow to engine. Okay, so I'm going to be calculating both because it's kind of tricky. So either we require the pump for the system or the total pump requirements. Analysis. So first things first, I'm going to be using my mechanical energy equation to analyze this. As you can see, flow goes from right to left, which is kind of funny. Uh, typically, we prefer to make diagrams from left to right, but either way, this is very important. We got the suction line, the discharge lines, and yeah, we got the fuel tank. And this is kind of tricky. Probably you're wondering, are we going to be making our analysis in the suction line or in the fuel tank? And the main idea Actually, this is an interesting concept because we don't have specifications of the pipe length. We don't know if this is very huge or very small, and we don't have information on the elbows. So either way, you should be able to say, yeah, I'm pretty sure that we are making the analysis from the reservoir to the engine. Although suction analysis could make a little bit sense because uh, it's not going to be that different from the original case. Okay. Hey there. I hope that you're enjoying so far the course because this is just a preview that I uploaded to YouTube. So if you want to check out the full content of this course, maybe you're looking for a specific problem or a specific solvent exercise, or just to know all the theory and structure, ensure to check out this link right here. Now, of course, you will get access to all the full dynamic video lectures. I've also added some text and summaries in each specific lecture. We have a lot of solvent exercises all explained step by step. A lot of downloadable material, for instance, the equation booklet, the spreadsheet that are modeling certain type of systems or so, PDF sheet and industry vocabulary. Not only that, in order to evaluate yourself, we have prepared some quizzes so you ensure that you are learning all way long. And finally, guys, the top question and answer for job interview. If you are going to take this to the next level, you're looking for a job, and you know that you require this knowledge, you are going to get some very useful questions. I hope that you enroll in the course, and I'll see you in class. Specific weight of gasoline is given us here. 6.86 kilonewton per cubic meters. Point A, the suction. Technically, this will not be the suction, guys. I don't want you to get confused with suction per se. We're talking about the reservoir. So yeah, this will be reservoir. Although we typically say suction because it's the other side of the discharge. Either way, we can either assume the velocity is that of the pipe or more importantly, the velocity is that of the stagnant value right here. And this is a very interesting conundrum, guys, because Yes, theoretically, we need to understand whether or not we are going to be using the velocity of the pipe or the velocity of the reservoir. But another important aspect I want to analyze is that actually the change in pressure is very drastic. We're going from a vacuum to 30 kilopascals. The theoretical approach will be yes, we need to select the correct one. But the reality engineering approach will be either case, we don't care because the velocity head is going to be small. So that could be one case for you to analyze, guys. 
make the calculations for the suction line and for the reservoir. Okay, so we get the following. I'm going to be assuming that this is the reservoir, so zero cubic, so zero meters per second. Okay, the pressure is actually vacuum, so we need to calculate this via pressure is density times gravity times the change in height. The change in height, so the density of mercury is 13,600 13, kilograms per cubic meters. Then the gravity, 9.8 meters per second to the square. And then we got the vacuum, which is 0 0.15. This is millimeters, just divided by 1,000, and you got 0 0.15 meters. Performing these calculations, and this must be negative because this is vacuum, this will be the negative value. Actually, you could say that this is gauge value. And this is horizontal line, so zero feet at height. Now, the discharge line is way easier to calculate, so we can calculate the velocity of the pipe. Yes, actually, this is incorrect. We cannot assume so. We need to calculate the velocity of the pipe. And one of the main problems is that we don't have specifications of the pipeline. So because I don't have specifications of the pipeline, I cannot calculate the area. Now, in engineering cases like this, you can either do the following, and we already discussed it. We can either ignore that the velocity head will be pretty similar, so let it be velocity head change is going to be pretty near. And as I said before, guys, we don't have area, so we cannot relate this because in the specifications, we don't have anything regarding area. We just know these are identical sizes. Now, in the case that we were analyzing discharge and suction, there will be no problems because the area is the same, meaning that the velocity head of the discharge minus the velocity head of the suction will be zero. But in the real case in which we needed to calculate this, we will have to calculate or account for the diameters. Now, you can try to imagine one diameter, maybe one inch, maybe two inches, but as I said before, guys, this is not quite relevant. So I'm going to be assuming or ignoring the velocity. Then we got the pressure, which is 30 kilopascals, it's given, and the height, once again, is zero because it's at the same level. Now, through point A and B, we got a pump with an efficiency. We have no requirements for energy losses or outlet work. So calculations are going to be simplified. I'm going to ignore the velocity head. I'm going to ignore the position or elevation head. I'm going to cancel friction losses and removal. So I end up with this value or this equation for the pump head. Now I'm going to be also calculating the volumetric flow rate. We know it's one liter in 40 seconds, which means 0 0.025 liters per second and changing that to cubic meter per second will be this. Okay, as stated before, we got this equation. I'm going to be substituting data. This is 30 kilopascals minus the negative value right here. Oops, the negative value right here. So this is in reality 20, so this will be 30 kilopascals plus 20 will be equal to 50 kilopascals divided by the specific weight, which we already know is something around 7 uh, kilonewton per cubic meters. This will be something around 7 meters approx. So yeah, we got it right here. Now the power requirements for the system will be simply volumetric flow rate times head times specific weight of the uh, materials. So this will be the volumetric flow rate, the head of the system, and I'm not using kilonewtons. I'm actually going to be using newtons because I am already seeing that this is a very small amount of power. And we end up with 1.25 watts. But remember that we have 60% of efficiency, so we need to account for that. And in reality, we require a pump of 2.08 watts.